When you can't be corrected by the Bible, you have a problem. Right. That's a big problem. That's a set. Acts chapter 5, look at verse 17. It says, Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with them, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. Skip down to verse 34. So we see the Sadducees are called a sect. Why? Because they believed a bunch of weird, goofy stuff. They were against the, the resurrection. They believed all this weird stuff that you couldn't get from the Bible. Jesus was always rebuking them with the Bible. He's like, have you not read? I mean, God's the God of the living, not of the dead. Look at verse 34, though. It says, Then stood there up one of the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had a reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. And he said to them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thutis, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain in all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. Now Gamaliel, I don't even know if this guy was safe. But he has a really good idea here. He has, a, he has the right thought. Look, if it's of God, it's going to succeed. If it's not of God, if it's just of a man, it's going to fail. And we see a really, a really crucial thing when we're, we're thinking about following a man. Look, if you're following this guy and it's not going to succeed ever, it's just going flat. It's not of God. Right. The Bible has power. God's Word has power. The Gospel has power. Right. And even though people might forsake it and fall away, and there might come back down and we might have a refining process and go back to a few men, we know that the faithful are always going to be successful. God's going to be with them. The Gospel's going to go forth. People are going to get saved. But when we see the guy that's just going after himself, he's just rising up and there's this small faction of people that draw themselves away, they're going to fail. I don't want to follow this guy that's going to fail. I want to follow the guy that's going to be successful. So if I know what this Bible says, if I'm letting this Bible help me pick the man, then I'm not going to pick a loser. I'm not going to pick some guy that's just going to draw a faction away from a church and do nothing with his life. Because look, outside of the church, you're going to do nothing for God. Right. You're going to stop go soul winning. Yep. You're not going to live for God. You're not going to read the Bible. Yep. You're not going to do the things of God. You're just going to fail and fail. And the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. You're going to just die. I don't want that. I want to follow the guy that's going to succeed. I want to go to the guy in church that's following the King James Bible, that's going soul winning, that's going to lead me. And if you ever follow some guy outside of the church, you need to just repent and get back in the church. Amen. That, and follow a man that's doing what the Bible says. Amen. Not follow some loser, some guy that's going to go contrary to the tradition that you've received of the men of God. Amen. That's